When I was young and just beginning to learn about my Catholic faith, I was unaware that Easter was a season in the worship life of the Catholic Church and not just one day celebration on Easter Sunday of Jesus rising from the dead. Perhaps I should have known that before, but I didn't. <laughs> During these 50 days of celebration that ends with Pentecost in a few weeks, you know, that opening prayer offered by Father Ray refers to these days of joy. You know, we get to hear the biblical accounts of many witnesses, over 500, encountering the risen Christ and how their lives are forever changed as a result of it. These biblical accounts and the sacred tradition of the church form the foundation of our belief today in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Without a belief in the resurrection, our faith really is in vain. John reminds us earlier of this in his gospel when he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. This is God's promise to us. His deep love for each one of us makes it possible for us to live in the hope of experiencing eternal life with him in heaven. You know, if you need a vivid image of how Jesus accomplished this with his self-sacrificing love, there it is, right there, in that window, followed by that window over there, as he rose from the dead. During these weeks of Easter, you've noticed that our Old Testament reading has been replaced by readings from the Acts of the Apostles, covering the activities of mainly Peter and Paul and others with accounts of Luke's biblical history that describes how salvation promised to Israel in the Old Testament and accomplished through Jesus dying and rising has now been extended to the Gentiles, all non-Jewish people. That includes us. Some scholars refer to the Acts of the Apostles as the gospel of the Holy Spirit, because we get to see the Holy Spirit, in many cases, directing the activities of Peter, Paul, and others to build up the Christian community and spread the good news of salvation through belief in the risen Christ. In today's first reading, we encounter Peter, who has already experienced Pentecost, and is now being taught through visions and his encounter with the Roman centurion Cornelius, who also experienced an angelic vision that salvation through belief in Jesus is a universal gift to all people, and not just the Jewish community. Peter and his companions are just astonished that Cornelius and his household have the same Pentecost experience that he and his companions had had previously. This really convinces Peter that God shows no partiality and that all those who revere God and act uprightly are acceptable to him. And then he orders them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Fortunately, we in the 21st century are included in that conviction. After Peter experiences Pentecost earlier in chapter 2 of Acts, he speaks to those in Jerusalem who have not received the Spirit and who are asking 
What should we do? And Peter says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is really what the church has been proclaiming down through the centuries to all people of all nations. And God has made good on his promise. Lord, here we are, repentant people, baptized, our sins forgiven, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Because we remain in the love of Jesus who remains in his Father's love, we are additionally appointed to go and bear fruit that will last. The fruit that John reports in Jesus' words are not grapes, but undoubtedly the fruits of the Holy Spirit which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In short, in Jesus' words of this gospel in John's letter, he says, I command you to love one another, and this is how we will remain in his love. Amen.